Hey guys, I wanted to kick off today's video by wishing a very happy Thanksgiving to all of my Canadian friends out there. I know I will be doing a ton of tasty cooking this weekend, as well as a whole lot of eating, and I hope you will be too. Be sure to let me know what's on your Thanksgiving menu in the comment section below, because you guys know I love hearing from you. On today's episode of In Season, we are actually celebrating one of autumn's most abundant flavors, pumpkin. I'm going to show you my amazing pumpkin and pecan baked oatmeal. Then I'm going to show you a delicious pumpkin pie dip that is amazing with things like apple slices and ginger snaps. And we are going to wrap things up with an amazing pumpkin turkey chili that is as nutritious as it is delicious. So let's kick things off with my awesome baked oatmeal. What I love about baked oatmeal is that it's got all of the nutritious goodness of oatmeal, but it is extremely portable. So you can just grab one on your way out the door in the morning. No muss, no fuss. For this recipe, we're getting started by mixing up our dry ingredients. So in a large bowl, I've got some rolled oats standing by. If you're in the US, these are also called old fashioned oats. To that, I'm going to add some baking powder so that these get a nice amount of lift and some pumpkin pie spice. You can either buy pumpkin pie spice already blended at the store, or you can make your very own. To do that, I've left a full how-to video link right here or the recipe in the description box below. Be sure to check it out after you're done watching this video. Then all we're going to do is whisk all of our dry ingredients together so they're well combined and then set them aside. Then we're going to get to work on mixing up our wet ingredients. So obviously this wouldn't be pumpkin pecan baked oatmeal if it wasn't for some pumpkin. Now I'm using some canned pumpkin puree in this recipe, but if you can't find that where you're from, you could absolutely do this by roasting up a few small pumpkins and then just scooping out all of the filling. It always bugs me when pumpkin spice recipes don't actually have any pumpkin in them. It doesn't make any sense. And to that I am adding some applesauce. You can use unsweetened applesauce here if you wanna keep these a little less sweet, a little healthier. Next, I am going to add some milk, some maple syrup for sweetness. We're also going to add a splash of vanilla extract because honestly, it really brings out flavors beautifully. I'm also going to add two eggs to help bind this all together. Now, if you wanted to keep this recipe completely vegan, you could definitely swap out the dairy milk for some almond milk and the eggs for some flax eggs. And then we're just gonna whisk all of this goodness together. And trust me, your house is going to immediately smell like pumpkin pie, which is never a bad thing. And then we are going to pour our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients and stir them. We're going to finish this off by folding in some crushed pecans. And then we are going to scoop all of this yumminess into a muffin tin lined with some cupcake liners. I'm going to finish all of these beautiful baked oatmeals off with one pecan half and then into the oven they go at 375 for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, they are soft, chewy, delicious, and ready to eat. You can store them in the refrigerator for up to a week or in the freezer for up to three months. Next, we are going to whip up an incredibly simple but flavorful snack that happens to taste a whole lot like pumpkin pie. So in a bowl, I've got some vanilla flavored Greek yogurt. And to that, I'm going to add some more pumpkin puree. For sweetness, I am actually using some maple syrup. I'm Canadian after all, where maple syrup is in abundance. I'm going to finish this off with some more yummy pumpkin pie spice and give it all a good stir. And honestly, that's it. What's cool about this yogurt is that you can actually eat it just as is with a spoon. And trust me, that will not suck but I actually like it best when it's served as a dip with some beautiful apple slices and some ginger snaps. My seasonal cookie of choice. Finally on today's menu, I'm going to show you an amazing main that I absolutely love. It's my turkey pumpkin chili. And I love it because it's hearty and it's filling and it's loaded with nutrition. For this recipe, I'm getting started with a large Dutch oven on the stove. You could also use a large soup pot if that's what you had on hand. So I've got my Dutch oven heating up on medium high and to that I'm going to add a good drizzle of oil. Next, I'm going to add some finely diced red onion and some finely chopped red bell pepper. 
Oh, I love the sound of that sizzle. I'm going to saute these veggies until they're nice and soft, and then I'm going to add some minced garlic and some minced jalapeno pepper. Now, minced jalapeno is certainly optional, but come on. It wouldn't be chilly without the heat, would it? I'm going to let the garlic and the jalapeno heat up for about 30 seconds, and then it's time to add my ground turkey. I'm using ground turkey in this recipe, but if you wanted to keep it completely vegan, you could totally leave the turkey out. That would work just as well. And we are just gonna cook all of this ground turkey up until it is no longer pink. Next up, we are going to toast up some spices, and this is not for the faint at heart. So I've got some chili powder, which of course, it wouldn't be chili without chili powder. I've got some ground cumin, some garlic powder, and a little bit of dried oregano. And we are going to toast up these lovely spices for about a minute, and heating them up just adds to their flavor. Next, I'm going to add some vegetable broth, some crushed tomatoes, some diced tomatoes, and some pumpkin puree. I'm going to stir all of this together until it's well mixed, and then I'm going to add my beans. I'm going to let all of this yumminess come to a boil, and once it's reached a boil, I'm going to turn my heat down to medium low, put the lid on my pot, and let this baby simmer. The longer it simmers, the more delicious it becomes. I recommend at least a half hour, but two hours is ideal. When it's ready, I like to serve it with a good dollop of sour cream and some freshly chopped green onion. What a beautifully filling fall supper. I hope you'll give these tasty recipes a try, and if you do, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchens. And if you have a yummy idea for an episode of In Season, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there's lots more deliciousness where this came from.